Right. So, very good morning to my brothers and sisters at Bethany EFC. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm very thankful to be here in your midst again. It's a special day. So, once again, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the room. And also all the mothers online, including my wife, uh, happy Mother's Day. Um, thankful that today we can all just uh, come together and hear God's word. Uh, speaking of mothers today, is very interesting. Uh, the scripture is talking about two women. Uh, I don't know whether they're mothers, but at least at this point of their lives, Mary and Martha, they are very famous. Uh, it's a very famous story. It's a very familiar story. And in fact, if I were to use a very stereotypical description of Mary and Martha, which may not be accurate and might not even be fair, uh, the issue here is to be, uh, seems to be a struggle between uh, who's the better person or who's the better woman, right? Uh, the hardworking, busy Martha and the lazy Mary, so to speak. Now, uh, we see in this very short passage, verses 38 to 42, a contrast between busy Martha and uh, what Martha would might, might say, uh, this lazy Mary. Here we see uh, Martha's running about, uh, busy and getting the house ready, whereas there sits Mary just in front of Jesus and lazy. And in that culture, in that social, that society, it might not be wrong to call her lazy, just sitting there and doing nothing. Women were supposed to work in the house. And while this is a very broad stroke of the culture in those days, I wonder whether it's a very unfair depiction of Martha and Mary. Busy Martha, lazy Mary. And I wonder how many of you resonate with the feelings of Martha when she looks at that Mary, that sister of hers. And how many of us are really guilty, you know, of always being busy? Anyone want to confess? The men can confess as well. How many of you feel you're always very busy in life, you know? Busy Martha's. Okay, not very, not many honest people here. Huh? <laughs> I know Singaporeans are very busy, right? But how many of us also are guilty sometimes of being too busy even in church? You know, uh, and I say that because um, when we think about it and the context, this seems to be a very important question for us as we serve the Lord. Uh, are we always busy, busy, busy? Uh, but to quote an old movie that you don't have to bother watching, uh, there's something about Mary. And we want to grasp that something today. Uh, and perhaps in light of the passage today, may I clarify and ask you again, uh, how, are, how many of us are sometimes too busy or feel so busy and tired sometimes at church? You sometimes feel so tired and weary in your service to God that sometimes we even get bitter. Uh, I ask this specifically in light of the passage because Martha was not busy just doing nothing. And she wasn't just doing random things like playing games or uh, doing her own things. She was busy preparing the house for the Lord's presence. There was a VIP there. His name was Jesus. And she was preparing the house and preparing everything for the Lord. But in the midst of all this, Jesus says to Martha and to Mary in the presence that Mary has chosen the good portion and that it will not be taken away from her. Now, the question we want to ask today is, uh, you know, why was Martha not seen in, the, seen in the same light? You know, she was serving the Lord. She was being a very good, hospitable host to Jesus Christ. She was doing everything that was expected culturally from, for her. And what was her problem, though, that seemed to be getting in the way from her choosing the good portion? Or some translations say, chosen what is better. Now, friends, what is the better choice? Uh, we don't have to guess. The passage is actually very short and very clear. The better choice here was what Mary did. Mary sat at the Lord's feet to listen, to learn. And now while we'll go deeper into the meaning of what it means to sit at the feet of Jesus, it's sufficient to say right now that Jesus says this was the better choice. And Mary's choice was better than Martha. So question again, why didn't Martha sit? Jesus' feet. And a more interesting question is, did Martha want to? If given a choice, would Martha want to sit at the feet of Jesus? Now, if she wanted to, why didn't she? That's the question we want to ask today. Why did Martha not sit at the feet of Jesus? Why didn't she choose this choice that Mary chose? And to answer the question, we look at three parts of the passage today. I think the first part is, can be found in verses 39 to 40, where we see a contrast, where we see Mary choosing to sit at the Lord's feet to listen to his teaching. And what do we find Martha doing? 
uh, she was distracted by her serving. If you look at the scripture again, it says, Mary sat at the Lord's feet. She listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. Now, the key word here is distracted. Uh, scripture tells us that Martha was distracted, suggesting that Martha, even if she wanted to sit at the Lord's feet, she couldn't because she was busy. She was distracted. There are so many things that were urgent, important, and had to be done. A long list, a checklist of to-dos that she had to do before she could sit at the feet of Jesus. Even if she wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus, she couldn't because she was too busy. And that's why they say she was distracted with much serving. Notably, she wasn't distracted because she didn't want to be with Jesus. She was distracted because she was serving, preparing the house for Jesus. Now, friend, serving is a good thing. I think to have a servant heart is something to be worthy of commend, uh, commandment and something that we at, uh, at church and even in the societies that we live in today, to be a servant leader seems to be a good thing. Now, what she was doing was good. She wanted to serve the Lord. She wanted to be a hospitable host. And it wasn't an issue of saying that hospitality is a bad thing. It wasn't a bad thing then, and it's not a bad thing today. But sometimes, even when we're doing something that's good, even the good things that we have in mind in our lives, sometimes can distract us from sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now, what are some good things that distract us today? You know, uh, it could literally be anything, right? It could be anything in our lives that distract us from coming before Jesus and sitting before him to learn, to listen. Now, I could just uh, uh, list a few. It could be work, it could be school, even parenting or caring for our elderly parents or our young children. All of the above, when put in the right perspective, especially on Mother's Day, right? They're all good things. We can honor God at work by being a good witness to our colleagues. We can honor God in our studies by doing our best and applying what we learn to impact society in a good way. We can honor God by caring for our elderly parents and guiding the young children. But it becomes a distraction when any of the above good things cause us to put Jesus as a less priority in our lives. And we get distracted and we don't sit at the feet of Jesus anymore. We are distracted by the good things in life. In fact, we are distracted by our serving. You know, more importantly, when we look at the passage, we see that Martha is distracted in, his, in her service for Jesus. You know, I'll never forget what a friend once said to me when we asked them, you know, what distracts you from coming uh, or having an intimate relationship with God? And he answered with one word, church. And I was like, what? That's an answer that no pastor wants to hear, right? Church being a distraction from Jesus. And the, the, the essence of what he was trying to say is sometimes we can be so busy serving the Lord, so proactive in demonstrating our faith, and so busy like Martha going around Jesus, and we forget to sit before Jesus. We're so busy walking around, and we forget to sit at the feet of Jesus. Now, pastors as well, we always have to think about our lives and make sure that you know we are sitting at the feet of Jesus as well. And lately, I was looking at, back at my past few months uh, and some of you may know I'm a new director of a mission agency. In the midst of trying to get my agency known, the first thing I tried to do um, might not be the wisest of strategies, but I said yes to pretty much every sermon invitation that I could get. I wanted to go to as many churches as I could so that people would get to know about me and more importantly, get to know about the mission work that we're doing uh, because it's very meaningful and very important. But I still remember one week, uh, you know, Easter week, Easter weekend, uh, Good Friday, uh, all the way to Easter Sunday. Uh, I preached five times that weekend. And I still remember, uh, you know, Good Friday I preached. Uh, Saturday, my church, uh, Jesus is risen one day early. So we preached on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I preached at three different churches. And then at the end of that, you know, Jesus was risen. But I was lying flat, tao ta on my bed, right? Uh, I warned others not to be burnt out. But I myself was going through that dreaded burnout feeling. And you know, when you're burnt out, uh, even when you're serving the Lord, it's not a good feeling. In fact, you don't feel that close to the Lord. You feel, you know, you start to question things and you go, God, you know, what am I doing? And if there's any weekend, you know, as a pastor, sometimes we think, I want to be busy for the Lord. We think, oh, it will be Good Friday to Easter, you know. 
if I want to burn for the Lord, that's the week to tell ta. But you know, it's a good intention, a bad implementation. Uh, I got burnt out. Uh, Jesus was risen, but I was lying on my bed. And uh, the danger is we can be so busy for Jesus, but don't have time to fellowship for him. You know, I can be so busy preparing a sermon, I forget to be devotional in my life with Jesus. And that's a danger for all of us as well. As we serve the Lord, do we continue to be devotional in the way we walk with Him? So in the past few weeks, I've been very intentional to empty my schedule. I even took a five-day break to go to JB, not just to eat, but to slow down and to reprioritize my life. Um, perhaps many of us in uh, this room have been so busy, whether outside in society or even in church, that we need to take a pause and really smell one another. Are we having that tauta smell in this room? And really to realign our lives and to sit at the feet of Jesus again. You know, it's very dangerous when we think being busy for the Lord is the same thing as being intimate uh, in our relationship with the Lord. You can be so busy for the Lord, yet forget to walk with Him and sit at His feet daily. So friends, the danger of distractions is real. Sometimes in church, we also have to ask ourselves whether we just get busy or we really come before the Lord to seek Him in our prayer meetings, in our lives, and in our serving. Now, the answer is, how do we help ourselves to stay away from being overly distracted? We need to make spending time sitting at the Lord's feet a priority in our lives. You know, this is different from just doing things for Him. We're talking about spending time with Him. And that could be through prayer, through worship, through fellowship, but not in a busy, busy mentality. Friends, there will always be distractions in our life. But the, if our relationship with Christ truly matters, He has to be our priority. We have to make spending time sitting at the feet of Jesus a priority in our life. And that's a priority for everyone who wants to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, it's clear that Martha's intentions were good. See, we don't doubt the busy people in our lives and say, you know, uh, they're just being busy for nothing. Sometimes they have good intentions. But Jesus was there. And what was more important? Was it to serve him or to sit at his feet? See, Martha got so distracted by everything she wanted to do for the Lord, she forgot to spend time to be with him. Remember, friends, we're not human doers. We're called human beings. And I think a very important reminder is being with Jesus is what truly matters. And if our priorities aren't correct, you know, we can serve him and it becomes more important than being intimate and walking daily with Christ. And do you know what happens to servants who forget why they're serving? You know what happens to servants who don't spend time with the person whom they serve? They forget and also they become bitter. They become angry. They become disappointed. And that's what happened here for Martha. See, Martha was a wonderful servant. You know, in that culture, she would get an A+. Plus. You know, she welcomed Jesus into her home and she started getting busy for the Lord and started to prepare the house and the food for the Lord. But here was Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, doing, according to Martha, nothing, right? She was doing her best, Martha, to prepare the home for this VIP and there was Martha sitting there doing nothing. And the old saying goes, right? Don't just sit there. What do we say? Do something. That, that's probably like Martha's uh, inner thoughts at that moment, you know? Mary, don't just sit there. Get up. Do something. And that's exactly what Martha said to Jesus, right? Martha said to the, uh, Jesus, you know, Jesus, Lord, why do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her. Tell her to help me. You see, we are. it's very obvious that Martha is not comfortable with what Mary is doing because she could use another helper in the kitchen. She requests Jesus to be on her side. So he says, Jesus, Lord, don't you care? My sister is doing nothing. She's just sitting here. Can you get her to stand up, stop being so lazy, and help me out? And I almost expect Martha to think Jesus will reply, going, oh yeah, Martha, you're absolutely right. You know, Mary, go and help her first, you know. Uh, we can chat later, you know. 
uh, and that would be the cultural expectation at that time, perhaps. You know that women should be busy getting ready for the, uh, the for the guests. But Jesus does not respond exactly that way, does he? He actually says to Martha that Mary has chosen what is better. I, I don't know about you, but if I was Martha and I heard that, I, I would have trouble seeing how that is better. You know, I'm preparing the house. We're going to eat soon. We're going to celebrate and have fellowship with you. But Mary's not helping. And you said she is choosing what is better. You see, Martha's bitterness, her disappointment with Mary makes more sense once you understand first century Jewish homes. Martha was the one serving Jesus, doing the best to offer hospitality to the guests. Socially, culturally, Martha was right. Mary was doing nothing. She was sitting there, not helping to serve the guests. She was just sitting at his feet. And to Martha, that was not just laziness, but culturally inappropriate. How could you not serve the guests? How could you just sit there while I'm busy in the, in the kitchen? So, you know, if we were to be honest today, even in our culture, there's a lot of unspoken expectations, even for believers today, right? What's a good Christian in the 21st century? Come to church, you know, uh, serve in the church. Uh, if you're the powerful and, uh, uh, you know, the very adamant good disciples, you will join prayer meetings and you will join the committees, you know? There's a lot of unexpected expectations today in church. Uh, to be honest, some are spoken, uh, some are not spoken. <clears throat> Recently, I had to go and help my wife go shopping for a dress because uh, I'm going to have my ordination service in a few weeks. So uh, my wife and I, we were going to buy a dress. It seems like a simple task, right? And we went out, and I said, how about this one? And she's like, no, cannot, cannot. And then we, she looks at one more, and she goes, how about this one? I said, cannot, cannot. And you know what was our struggle? We all looked at the dress, and we're like, this is not what a pastor's wife would wear, you know? This is not simu material, you know? And, and we're thinking in our hearts, like, what is it uh, that we can wear that people will look, oh, this is pastor's wife. Prim and proper, and you know, that's the kind of holy uh, but uh, appropriate kind of dress that a uh, sumu or a pastor's wife would wear. You see, there's a lot of unspoken expectations in my life. Uh, in fact, I also had unspoken expectations as I served the Lord. If I'm serving, I expect you to serve just as hard as I am. You know, I remember a time when I was in Canada, I was the chairman of the fellowship. Uh, and we were going to get ready for about 40 people to come into a room for a fellowship. Uh, and in about 30 minutes, it's going to start. And so there I was, stacking chairs, making the circle of chairs for the fellowship, right? And getting ready the room. And my co-chairman, my vice chair, uh, she was just standing there and laughing and talking to the members. And I was looking at her. And, you know, I was making more noise as I put down the chairs, making it more obvious that I was preparing the room. And I don't know whether it was my look or my face, but she obviously knew I was unhappy and came over. But rather than help me, do you know what she said to me? She looked at me and said, Oh, Martha, Martha, why are you so busy? Oh, to say that my blood boiled is an understatement, right? This so-called Martha is busy preparing the room so that everyone can be happy later when we have fellowship. You know, This busy bee was doing what was right. As a leader, servant leaders should serve, you know. And here was lazy Mary doing nothing but laughing and having fun with all the other believers. And so I was standing there and really upset because from my perspective, this lazy Mary was doing nothing. And yes, I did. I, at that moment, I was disappointed with her. In fact, first century readers would look at this passage and be disappointed with Mary. They would look at that and say, Martha is doing the better thing. Martha chose the better choice. She was being a good female Jewish host. Mary was not. But here was Jesus challenging the social and cultural norms by saying that Mary had chosen what is better. She had done the better choice. Now, don't misunderstand this passage. It's not saying that sitting down and doing nothing is better than working hard or being a good host. This is not the point of the passage. And in fact, it's not even a rebuke of Martha. It's saying that what Mary chose was better. And simply here, the lesson is, you know, when she chose the good portion or what is better, the lesson is choosing between what is good and what is even better. You know, there are a lot of good things in life. 
Martha was doing one of those good things in life. But sometimes we have to have the wisdom and the discernment to choose between what is simply good and what is better. And remember that story of my anger in Canada, you know, when I was scolding that lazy Mary? As I reflected on that, she chose something that was better as well. Because I was preparing the room so that everyone would be happy, happy. But I was so angry, right? And they were happy. They were having fellowship. The members were coming in, many of whom were non-believers. And she was welcoming them. She was talking to the people while I was busy with chairs. Which one is better? So a lot of times, you know, we have to choose between what is good and what is better. And lastly, as Jesus talks to Martha, Jesus does not actually rebuke her. She act, he actually lovingly responds to Martha, if you realize that. See, Jesus realizes that she is distressed by many things. But these are things that actually matter less. Because she is chosen what is good. But Jesus is trying to show her that there is something better. Now, how does Jesus respond to Martha's request? Lord, ask Mary to get up. Ask her to help me. How does he respond? He responds by saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. You know, when I first heard this passage, uh, when I first read it, I always felt that Martha, Martha was one of those, ah, yeah, Martha, Martha, you know, that kind of mentality. And so Jesus was rebuking her, looking down on Martha and rejecting and scolding Martha, which is also why I was so angry when my friend called me Martha, you know. So my blood boiled because these same words were spoken to me. But in the original context of Luke, Martha, Martha is used in a loving and an endearing and tender way. And why I say that is we see in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, uh, Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? So that was obviously not a rebuke, right? They were calling him Lord, Lord, out of love, out of respect. Chapter 8, the same thing. They say, Master, Master, chapter 8, verse 24. And in the most obvious one, perhaps, is in Luke chapter 13. When Jesus says to the people of Israel, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. It's not rebuke. It's love, care, concern. Ultimately, he's saying to Martha, I care deeply about you. And my concern is this. You care about things. You're anxious. You're distressed. You're troubled about things that matter less. You're worried about things that don't truly matter. But Mary has chosen the better option. See, Jesus was not actually rebuking her activity, what she was doing. Jesus was telling her, look, your attitude is wrong. You shouldn't be worried about all this. You shouldn't be uh, concerned about these things that matter less. She was always busy, always anxious, always distressed because of things that mattered less. To her, these things <clears throat> were necessary. <clears throat> to her, to be busy was to be responsible. To fill our schedules, brothers and sisters, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. seems like the nice thing to do sometimes. We're, like, we're being responsible. We're being good workers, good parents, good Christians. But sometimes in our fervency for the Lord, do we get distracted? Do we get disappointed or even distressed? by things that matter less. You know, prior to focusing on preaching ministry, uh, my focus for many years in my life was worship ministry right here. And uh, since the age of 14, uh, I was involved in this. And to be honest, I still struggle to this day when I see bands or worship leaders in church who quarrel and argue uh, over a missed beat, a singer that goes slightly off tune, or they just grow very impatient with one another. Have you seen musicians? Uh, musicians, we, we naturally are quite perfectionists, and we get very easily impatient with one another. And that does not edify one another. I remember one time I was playing my heart out, you know? I was playing really uh, devoted, and I was like so passionate for the Lord. By the end of that worship, though, uh, the worship leader came to me and said, I'm very disappointed with the team. We didn't sound very good at all. And, and that just hurt me so deeply. I can still remember to this day where it happened, the location, the time of the day. You know, it was so painful. But friends, St. Augustine is probably right when he says, for the important things in life, let there be unity. For the less important things, let there be diversity. And for all things, let there be charity. Let there be love. See, the challenge for every believer then is, what are the lesser things? 
because a lot of us, we say everything's important. What are the lesser things in life? Uh, may I dare offer some practical advice to the church? Uh, using the example of worship ministry, uh, while our music ministry should glorify God by doing our very best, when we do have different opinions, can we accept diversity in the church? When we do make a mistake, when the pianist plays the wrong note, uh, today it's a little perfectly, all right? But when she plays the wrong chord, do we not go, but we act in love and encouragement, do all things to edify the church and those inside the church. See, like Martha, your attitude matters more than your activity. What you do matters less than your heart. Now, may I dare to even say all the acts of service we do in church in this grand scheme of things are lesser things compared to the one thing that mattered the most that Jesus is highlighting here. What's the one thing that's necessary in this passage? He says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious, you are worried, you're troubled, you're distressed about many things, but one thing is necessary and, and it will not be taken away from Mary. What's that one thing? Let's go back to the verse, verse 38, verse 39, and we start to see what was the one thing that Mary chose to do. Mary chose to sit at the feet of Jesus. And in fact, to sit at the feet of any rabbi or any teacher was a posture of a disciple. See, she chose to be a disciple of Jesus. She chose a posture that said, Lord, I want to listen. I want to learn from you. I don't want just to be busy for you. I want to hear what you have to say to me. See, disciples were the ones who typically sat at the feet of rabbis, of teachers. And while most rabbis only had male disciples, on Mother's Day, isn't it such a great reminder that women, women were welcome at the feet of Jesus. Women were welcome to be disciples of Jesus. And in fact, they are encouraged by Jesus, right? He says she has chosen the better choice. Now, so friends, this is actually not a lesson about uh, whether you should serve the Lord or not. This is a lesson that all are welcome to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And that is the one thing that Jesus is welcoming, welcoming you and me to do, to sit at the feet of Jesus as his disciple, to listen, to learn. Now, to do that, I think we can uh, look back at what we learned today. There's three important reminders about discipleship. <clears throat> the first is we need to get our priorities right. You know, uh, rather than get distracted, to get distressed by many things in life, Jesus' invitation is this, come and sit at the feet of Jesus. Uh, I once heard it said, and I totally agree, that Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life, is not a very good title for Singaporeans because we're already very driven, you know? So, uh, you know, we don't need purpose driven life. We need purpose directed life. We, we need purpose, we need direction, and we need to sit at the feet of Jesus to get that direction. And this life of ours, of me and you, we need to get our priorities straight. We need to make sitting at the feet of Jesus the one thing. You know, there's a book that I quite like. It says, too busy not to pray. You know, when we're so busy, do we forego church activities that really matter, like prayer, like reading God's Word? Or do we realize that the one thing we need to do is to listen, to learn, to sit at the feet of Jesus? That's the priority you need to do. You need to realign your life so that Jesus is your priority. Now, we also need to discern between what is good and what is better. Friends, this needs a lot of wisdom. It needs counsel. Sometimes you need outside perspective as well. That what is good sometimes is not what is best. And we need the wisdom of the Lord to realize that what the conclusion of this passage is, is not bad Martha, good Mary. And it's not hardworking Martha, lazy Mary, but that Mary chose the better choice. We need to discern between what is good and what is better, which leads us to the final conclusion. We need to have a posture of a disciple. We need to embrace that in our lives. You see, there's that image here, that image, I hope you will, you will take that home with you. The image of Martha being so busy running around the house, and here Mary's just sitting there, enjoying life, right? She's just enjoying Jesus speaking to her. And that image, I don't know about you, but Martha gives me, you know, high blood pressure. 
but Mary just calms you down. You know, Mary sitting at the Lord's feet, listening and learning. And Jesus welcomes all of us who are burdened, who are heavy laden, to come to him. You see, to sit at the feet of Jesus is another way of saying, I want to be a disciple of Jesus. I want to listen. I want to learn. It's a picture of unhurried time before the Lord. A posture of humility before the Lord. How many of us, you know, our posture today is that of a listener, of humility. And no, I don't mean you need to go and change your posture by going to a chiropractor. And more importantly, you need to come before the Lord to receive, to listen, to wait upon the Lord, just like Mary. You know, I wonder how many of us today, we're really sitting, we're receiving, we're learning. Or, you know, deep down inside, you know that duck image, you know, everyone looks okay on the top of the water, but underneath your feet are so busy, you're just tapping, tapping, saying, when is Pastor Kenny going to be finished? I'm done, I'm done, let's go, right? And perhaps you're tapping your feet, you're crossing your hands, you're asking God, why won't you do something? But here today, I think our priority, our posture ought to be humbly sitting at the feet of Jesus. Friends, today is just a reminder on Mother's Day, and not just to the women in this room, but also to the men, that all of us are called to that one thing, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And may I end with that promise of the Lord in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. <clears throat> it says here, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. That is the Jesus whom we serve. He's not calling us to busyness, but to sitting before him at his feet. Let's pray and let's ask God to help us to do it. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for your message today. We thank you for the reminder through Martha and Mary. You're not calling us to laziness, but you're calling us to be disciples, to sit at your feet, to listen, to learn, and to humbly say, Lord, we need you each day of our lives, Lord. We don't just want to be busy for you, but we want to know you. We want an intimate relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So help us, O oh Lord, we pray, and bless especially the mothers today as well on this Mother's Day. May all the glory be unto our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.